Well, today we want to look back at the history of mineral supplementation. It's a very interesting uh, story in, in the progress of humanity. And I want you to get a hold of the books Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and Rare Earths Been Cures. And this covers the subject very, very well. And um, basically when you go back and, and you look at some of the ancient writings and cave drawings and things, um, people used to watch animals, and the animals would eat dirt, and people would eat dirt. Uh, pregnant women were legendary for eating clay and um, uh, using salt and so forth because the embryo was stealing nutrients from them, and so they had cravings, and deficiencies of nutrients tend to cause cravings. And, of course, they learned that they could put wood ashes on their food. They could uh, eat clay uh, by the handfuls, and that would satisfy these cravings. Well, wood was a universal fuel going back five, six, seven thousand 7,000 years ago, and it's kind of interesting. All over the world, it was remote Pacific Islands, uh, Africa, Asia, uh, Europe, uh, Scandinavia, North America, Central America, Mexico, uh, which is part of North America, and South America. All over the world, the, the people used um, wood as fuel. Well, what most people don't understand, somewhere along the line, everybody learned to throw the wood ashes into the gardens as kind of a fertilizer, and it would drive growth. You'd get a 25-pound pumpkin instead of a 5-pound pumpkin, and um, they would get, oh, um, three-pound tomatoes instead of six-ounce potatoes and that sort of thing. But what they didn't realize was that the plants were sucking up the minerals in the wood ashes. Now, wood ashes are not really ashes. They're 95 to 98 percent minerals, and the 2 to 5 percent of the um, powder we call wood ashes, uh, the thing that makes them gray or black is the carbon that didn't burn. And the plants would suck up these minerals, and people would eat these plants, and they didn't realize that they're getting minerals in that fashion. Now, this was at all uh, stages. Now, rich people, kings and pharaohs, would give grave robbers bags of gold and silver. It would amount to maybe in today's prices of millions of dollars to bring them mummies. And the emperors and the pharaohs and the kings and the generals and successful merchants would grind up these mummies, and they would put the mummy dust onto their food as a condiment. And that's how rich people got their minerals. Well, poor people got their minerals by putting wood ashes into their gardens to fertilize their crops, but the crops would suck up the minerals, they'd eat the crops, and they'd get their minerals in that fashion. Well, this all ended at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4, 1882, on Pearl Street in New York City, in the bluff overlooking the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. The next day, the story was in every newspaper in the world, because we had the telegraph then, and it's one of the greatest um, uh, scientific achievements ever. Okay, and here we go. Uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4, 1882, on Pearl Street, New York City, in the bluff overlooking the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, Thomas Edison pulled the switch in the first commercial electric generating plant. Within 10 years, um, every um, municipality, every town, every city in the industrialized world converted from wood as a fuel to electricity. When you fuel your home with electricity or your factory with electricity, there's no more wood ashes left over. And what did people replace those traditional sources of mineral supplements, the wood ashes? Where, where, where did they replace it? With nothing. Because they didn't know they were getting minerals that way. And it was the beginning of a downward spiral thereafter. Well, in animals, um, you know, animals had cravings too and they had deficiencies. And so they would eat dirt and clay and go to natural salt licks. And people paid attention to this. And farmers wanting to make their cows happy gave them clay to eat and gave them wood ashes and gave them um, salt. And sometimes they'd mix the, salt, mix the salt and the wood ashes and clay all together. And, of course, it was beneficial to the animals. Well, again, I want you to get a hold of the books Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the book Rare Earths Been Cures. And you can see the details of the history of mineral supplementation and how mineral deficiencies can cause as many as, oh, 600 or more diseases. We need 60 essential minerals. Plants only need three. We need 60. And plants will take up any mineral, for instance, out of the soil that's soluble in water, and even though they only need three to give good seeds for the next generation and give free good growth rate and yield, um, they will suck up anything we give them if they're soluble. And so people got a lot of minerals that way. And, of course, it's, it's sort of spotty. In some areas, there'd be only three minerals, and plants were happy, but the people didn't do very well. Animals didn't do very well. In some places, there were 25 minerals. People did better. Animals did better. But the places that had 40 to 60 minerals, people lived a long time. Animals lived a long time. 
uh, they had less disease, uh, healthy kids, and people really didn't pay much attention to that because in the 1800s, doctors began to understand the concept of messages being passed on. They didn't have the word genetics or anything, but they knew the parents were passing on messages to the babies, and they thought there were good messages and bad messages, and it didn't matter um, what animals or people ate. Well, it turns out that what we eat and what we don't eat mean everything. That's called epigenetics. Epigenetics is giving your genes, your DNA, your RNA, and your telomeres everything they need to maximize your genetic potential for fending off disease and being healthy and strength and, and uh, living a long time, making good decisions. So again, I want you to get a hold of the books, Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Disease Transmission, the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the book Rare Earths Been Cures, and learn how you can save yourself and your family, add 25 to 50 healthy years to your kids' lives.